What's up guys, Young Sloth back, and in this video we will be talking about digital logic gates. Now you might be saying to yourself, what the hell are logic gates? Well to put it simply, logic gates are the building blocks of digital circuits, and digital circuits make up digital devices. And one of those devices is a computer. So that explains why we're learning this, because computers are made out of digital circuits and logic gates. Now I've been throwing around the word circuit for a while now and some of you might might have said to yourselves oh dang it I don't know anything about digital circuits or circuits and uh, you guys shouldn't be worried because this series is for computer scientists and not electrical engineers so basically all you need to know for right now is that when we send electricity down a wire it will be on or we'll call that it'll be a true value for that wire and we'll represent it with a one so that's if electricity is sent down that wire and if something is off or false it'll have a value of zero and that means no electricity is flowing down that wire alright so moving on now to the actual gates. I have six gates here and each gate takes in wires with which we will either send electricity down or we won't. So I'll be using my trusty wires A and B and we will construct truth tables for each one of these gates that will describe each one of their logic. So we'll start off with the AND gate. So this is our AND gate and we're gonna start off with the AND gate and we're gonna input A and B wires A and B or values A and B into our AND gate and we are going to get an output out of this AND gate that we will call or express in writing by A multiplication symbol B. So this is how we denote A and B the value A ended with the value B or sometimes you'll just see simply A no space B which uh, is most commonly used since a lot of people are pretty lazy and oh sorry I didn't mean to erase that one and so yeah let's start off let's write the characteristic table or the truth table here for this AND gate and we'll start off by inputting 0 and 0 into this AND gate so no electricity flowing down either wire and so we'll write it here and the AND gate basically will not output a 1 or will output electricity from its uh, output unless it gets two values of 1 at its input or all of its values at its input are 1 or electricity is being sent out from its input on all inputs. That's a little confusing but you'll see. So given that 0 0 will output no electricity and 0 1 so if we had a 1 here will also output no electricity because all of the inputs we get have to be 1 for the AND gate to output a 1 so one zero as you'd guess would also be zero but when the AND gate gets all of its inputs as one it will give us a one and so yeah that's the AND gate it's pretty simple and let's move on to the other gates alright so next up is the NAND gate and as you probably would have guessed the NAND gate is very similar to the AND gate it is actually the AND gate the opposite of the AND gate so the NAND gate is not one of those very common gates so you don't really need to know it that well well it is a common gate but then again it is not a fundamental gate Ugh. anyway just know the NAND gate so the NAND gate is the opposite of the AND gate so let's input A and B into the AND gate, I mean NAND gate, A, 
N A N D and we'll have an output which will be the opposite of A and B or the negation of A and B and we'll go over the NOT gate in a little bit which is the negation gate but um, this is basically denoted by A and B but with this bar on top of it so as you would have guessed and you guys probably know how to fill this out we have zero basically wherever our AND gate would have outputted a zero our NAND gate outputs a one and wherever our AND gate outputted a one our NAND gate outputs a false value or a zero so if we have zero zero of course we're gonna get a one if we have zero one we're gonna get a one if we have one zero we're gonna get a one and since the AND gate was true for one one the NAND gate is false so that's the NAND gate alright so next up is the NOT gate and basically the NOT gate is a little bit weird because it only takes in one input and of course it gives out its output and the output is written as A with a bar so whatever was inputted with a bar over it and basically what the NOT gate does is from whatever it gets in it basically gives out the opposite of whatever it takes in so as you would guess if we get a zero we'd output a one and if we get a one we output a zero easy simple not gate alright now moving on to the OR gate and you probably noticed that the OR gate looks very similar to the AND gate and yes it does but the only thing that's a little bit different is if you can tell this little curve at the end here and yeah just remember the OR gate has this little curve at the end as compared to the AND gate and also the OR gate is a little bit more um, I don't know peaked I guess yeah just keep those two things in mind so we're gonna input A and B into our OR gate and we will get out a or B which is denoted as a plus sign B or a or B so a or B so for the or basically it will be output a true value so this is a or B so it'll output a true value if either A or B so there are two inputs or you know it could be a lot more inputs but if any one of the inputs has a value of 1 then our output will be a value of 1 so you guys will see this in the table so if we have no values of 1 from our inputs we will get a zero for our output and if we get a zero and a one for B we will get a one as our output since B has a value of one and B is one of our inputs so one zero as you'd guess would be a one and one one would be a one since yes at least one of our inputs is has a value of one so yeah that's the OR gate pretty simple and let's move on alright so now we're gonna talk about the XOR gate and no it is not the opposite of the OR gate that would be the NOR gate we are talking about the XOR gate or exclusive OR gate we'll talk about the NOR gate next so basically the XOR gate in the case of two inputs is exactly the same as the OR gate except when we get all of our inputs as ones so all of our when all of our inputs are true so 
when all of our inputs are true in the case of an XOR gate we or in the case of an XOR gate for two inputs we will get a false output so you guys will see this in a minute when we fill out this table but first let's input our two inputs and place our output here oops you guys didn't see that let me erase this real quick so as you would guess it is exactly the same as I said as the OR gate so 0 1 0 I mean sorry probably confused a lot of people 1 0 1 and the exclusive OR for two inputs from that are all true will give us a zero it wants to have only one it wants to exclusively have only one one if that makes sense all right let's move on actually I almost forgot the way we write a X or B would be a with the circle plus sign and B so yeah this would be XOR the circle with the plus sign in the middle alright the last gate we'll be talking about here is the NOR gate and yes the NOR gate is the opposite of the OR gate so we'll do this one fairly quickly the, we'll input A and B output our output which will be A NOR B and A NOR B is written just like the NAND for AND which would be the regular notation plus the bar over it um, signifying that it is the negation of that um, so we will just write quickly in here the opposite of what OR would have outputted so 0 0 and 0 good alright so just to finish off talking about um, these gates just keep in mind that we're gonna be using mostly these three gates the AND gate the NOR gate <laughs> why did I draw the arrow like that the AND gate the OR gate and the NOT gate which are basically the most commonly used gates um, in an intro class. So thanks guys for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. In the next video. In the next video.